All right, all right. Shalom, shalom. Before I begin this lesson, of course, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha Kodash. All right, double honors once again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, many blessings to the elect. This is your brother, Atazawam, coming back in the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, I hope and pray that it's edifying. All right, it's going to be a quick PSA, um, you know, responding to one of the brothers uh, that did a video on this yesterday. I don't know which brother it was, but, uh, you know, basically I want to go into word placement and sound speech. Okay, understanding that we have the gospel of Yahweh Shai. These are Yahweh Shai's words. And we are just here to reiterate the words that were already written uh, for us to learn from. All right. We're not here to add to the words or take away. We're here to declare the whole counsel of the Most High before man, before the Israelites and heathens. We're not here to mingle our emotions and feelings. We're not here to vent, um, you know, from heartbreaks and traumas. We are simply here to, um, like I always say, camp. We're here to, to, to edify, to warn, and to, um, and to uh, uh, prophesy, okay? And um, it's just as simple as that. So sound speech and uh, discipline of the mouth is very important for us brothers um, that have been given the charge to teach this word. Now, the brother showed, and someone did this uh, about a week ago also, but the brother showed that on, on now on, on uh, this new YouTube update, where if you go to your description box and you click on show transcript, all right, it has the minute, the minute marker and it has your whole lesson in words. OK, your whole lesson is in words. Now, a couple of weeks back, the YouTube CEO um, was pushing for Congress to pass a bill to ban radical speech on their platform. All right. Now, this truth is not about. You know, being the most radical brother. It's not about being the most controversial brother and, and saying the most controversial things and always getting caught up in beefs and, and, you know what I'm saying, going back and forth with other Israelite camps, okay? Now, yes, we defend the gospel and yes, we correct, you know, things that are, um, that are taught wrong, but our main focus and mission is to help seal the elect of Yahweh Bashem Shah through edification, exhortation, and through prophesying, okay? Um, we're not here, you know, to, um, you know, like I said, you know, vent, you know, from traumas and heartbreaks, you know, and, and, you know, things of that nature. We're here to, to declare simply what's written of in the scriptures. Now, there are very bold and profound things written of in the scriptures that we will proclaim as in the heathens going into captivity. Okay. The, the so-called, um, white man being brought down from this current ruling society, America, which, but that's biblical. We can prove that biblically. Okay. Um, uh, um, world War Three. All right. America being destroyed. Also other parts of the world being destroyed. All the things that are written of that are, are sound and wholesome, that those are the things that we were set up to declare nothing more, nothing less. Okay. So exercise word placement, discipline of the mouth and sound speech. The word sound means healthy or whole, all right? And the, the, the healthiest form of teaching is always having scriptural um, references, scriptural points. You know, I did a video a uh, few months to a year back entitled uh, Beware of Excessive Point Making, and this is why, okay? Because the more points you make, the more you come out of your own heart, the more it gives the enemy leverage to use your words against you. And they tried to do that with Yahweh Shah, but Yahweh Shah was a man of short speech, but it was sound and wholesome speech. Okay? So let's get some scriptures. <clears throat> All right, I'm not going to be long in this lesson. Um, get right to the point. Um, this is um, Titus chapter 2 and verse 7. In all things show thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. And when you look at certain other camps or certain other denominations and factions of um, Christianity, their um, their speech or their doctrine is, is full of corruption. OK. They teach things that that, are, that they ought not to teach. They subvert whole household households. They pervert the gospel. They bring in damnable heresies, dogma. OK. And the doctrine that we teach, the word doctrine means teachings. 
All right. The teachings that we show should be full of uncorruption. All right. The word uncorruption means without death or, or unperishable. Get that off of me. OK. It says gravity and sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. OK. See that sound speech that cannot be condemned. All right. Let's get the word sound here. Strong's G, 5199, Hugies, Hugies. Yeah, and I'm going to get right to the point, the third definition. Teaching which does not deviate from truth, whole or sound, healthy, true, okay? So the true teachings, man, the true breakdowns that can't be condemned. And we actually had that happen to us before several times down at camp. And our, our saving grace that gave us the leverage you know, to the outsider was that we used the scriptures. We quoted the scriptures. We didn't get in our feelings and emotions and we weren't, you know, using um, ad hominem attacks and, you know, calling people out of their names. We weren't getting erratic and emotional because they might not have believed in what we believed in. We simply convinced the gainsayer through quoting scriptures. And it's just that sim simple. That's why the scriptures say study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. OK, so when your speech is sound and whole, Esau can write down and jot down as many points as he want to. OK, but guess what? You have a scriptural reference point. That's the thing that many other people don't have. They speak out of their mind. They speak out of their own heart. We speaking from the mind of Yahweh. That's why Yahweh charged the disciples and said, let this mind be in you. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, meaning his words, settle his words and certain things that Yahweh Shah quoted and spoke, settle them in your spirit so that you can, you know, e exemplify the standard that he left for us through the comforter. All right. It says that he that is of the contrary part, meaning them that are not of the truth that are from on the other side, um, may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. OK, so we see Esau right now was gathering data and information. And it's not just our videos that he has these transcripts on. All of these videos have have them. If you check all if you check your videos or anyone that you subscribe to, everybody has that transcript written down. OK, so this is another quick one. Ecclesiasticus 23 and um, let me see where it said the discipline. Yep. Verse seven here. O ye children. Ecclesiastes 23 and 7. Hear, O ye children, the discipline of the mouth. He that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. There's certain people out here, man. They're going to be they're going to be taken, you know, because of the things that they allow to come out of their mouths. OK, Esau going to come knocking on that door. OK, Esau going to come knocking on that door. Hey, I need you to come with me. So on and so forth. OK. Now, the scriptures already warn you that some of us shall be delivered up to the council. OK, um, you know, to the magistrate. Um, so we, we already, you know, con considering that and counting that cost. OK, but not all, but some. So it's important right now to not give Esau the portfolio that he's trying to build. If he is going to build something and persecute us, let it be from sound speech and wholesome words. At least we can we can go into the scriptures and show the, the reason why we said it. OK, because I think if I'm not mistaken on the Ronald Reagan, uh, he established the Bible as the public law of the land. I can't remember the um, the number, but it was like public law uh, 9280 or something like that. I can't remember, but it, it clearly states that the Bible is the law of the land. So if you use the Bible as a standpoint on your life and the things that you believe in, then that's that's that it can't be condemned. That's why the discipline of the mouth is very important, man. OK. Now, I know certain brothers do rants and things of that nature. But right now, I would really encourage brothers not to go on spiritual rants. All right. We're not here to rant. We're here to prophesy. Now, I know the apostles may, you know, go in, but they the apostles, you know. I would I really wouldn't encourage and push spiritual rants. OK, that's full of emotions and anger and, and 
yeah, I know we, we be full of those, you know, um, emotions and things of that nature. But right now, you know, we, we need to be locked into the spirit of things, man. Okay. Verse eight, the sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Okay. So, yeah, be, be mindful of the things that you allow. Remember the scripture say out the abundance of the heart. Let me get it. All right, out the abundance of the heart. This is a uh, Matthew twelve and thirty four. Old generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay. So being renewed and retransformed in your mind, uh, a part of that renewal is the things that you allow to come out of your mouth. All right, speaking things that are are, are in season. Okay, let thy words be seasoned. Let me get it. All right, this is uh, Colossians 4 and 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So it's all about, this truth is about us having the answers, being able to properly give the, the answers based upon what the scriptures say, and not giving an answer based on our emotions and how we feeling because we having a bad day. Okay. Now, you allowing your anger to, to be in the forefront of the doctrine rather than the teachings of Yahweh Shai being the, the, the primary focal point of what's coming out of our mouth. Now, like I said, yes, we're going to have feelings and emotions and we're going to feel a certain type of way because we, we're in oppression. We're under our enemy, this devil. OK, but remember, man, this is chess, not checkers. OK, this is a higher level of thinking. This is a higher level of being. In, in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay? So, yeah, you're going to have these emotions and feelings, but look at Yahweh Shai. Look at how he dealt with it. When he had those thoughts and emotions and feelings, he always quoted scriptures. Like it says in the book of Jeremiah, he would uh, quote uh, Isaiah, Habakkuk. Okay? Yahweh Shai was always quoting the prophets because that was his standpoint. All right? So, like I said, I just wanted to get that quick PSA. Uh, Lord willing, it was edifying until the next time I say Shalom.